Late Nights with Ian Collins on LBC. Uh, Tony says, I don't think the BBC is biased, but the type of industry traditionally attracts left-wing types. That's bang on. That is bang on. I don't know why that is. I don't, I'm not sure why it is. Uh, the world of acting is, a, is a, probably a better example. When you think about the job of being an actor, which is a pretty tough gig, I know a few people who do this for a living, and I know people who uh, have done rather well and became quite famous out of it, and I know people who struggle every day to... Um, Scrabble together a, a, a enough money to you know buy the next meal, etc. Like many other people do, uh, but the one thing that tends to bind most actors, uh, despite the fact you are completely responsible for your own existence, just completely responsible for your own work, you're completely responsible for your own taxation. You've got all of those things that you would think were not typically uh, left-wing attributes or um, predicaments or issues that you have to deal with. Uh, Therefore, most actors have to take sole responsibility. They have to run a kind of autonomous, tight ship. They have to be um, fairly officious with that, as they did. All of the things you sort of associate more as an entrepreneurial kind of thing, uh, which doesn't preclude you from being a lefty, by the way. But you know, if you think in stereotypical terms, you you might think you'd see more people on the centre-right than the centre-left, but again, by a country mile, uh, stuffed full of sizzling lefties. Uh, love that acting industry. Richard says, uh, LBC is horribly biased, but the telly... Oh, no, sorry, the BBC is horribly biased, but the telly should tax... Telly, telly tax should be scrapped and the BBC sold because a state broadcaster has no reason to exist. I can give you a reason in a moment, by the way, as to why I think it should exist news-wise. Um, and it's in all of our interests, including the commercial sector. I'll tell you that. And Graham in Bradford, the BBC are full of cultural Marxists. You've only got to watch kids' TV to realise this. I am for diversity and equality, so let it be so. OK. Um, Steve, <laughs> Steve in Nottingham. Don't go away, David. Steve, how are you, Steve? Oh, hi. Not too bad at all, thanks. Good. What, what are your thoughts on this one? That you want to think... scrap the BBC, or scrap the licence, put it that way. Yeah, um... I don't actually have a TV. I, I got rid of it some time ago because I don't like the idea of paying the sort of BBC tax. But what I was going to say was really the BBC, I don't think, has to worry too much about being Labour or Conservative or Lib Dem or being political at all. It always says that it's, it's apolitical and that's what it is. It's far more part of the establishment, part of a wing of government, if you like, uh, paid for by tax, which is effectively what the licence fee is, yeah. and set up in the 30s and during the Second World War and immediately after the Second World War, you know, as a kind of propaganda thing with the troops, keep the troops happy, and then in the 50s rebuild, rebuild Britain under a glorious socialist government. Um, so, as I say, that's why the whole argument about whether it's Labour or Conservative is, in my opinion, completely spurious. So, uh, would you say you would be mostly happy with the neutrality of the output that they give us? Uh, I, I, do, I think it leans a little to the right at the moment. Um, I, do, I do think that. Do you, if you think it does, do you think it, do you think it leans a little to the right because someone wants it to, or because someone just isn't questioning the government of the day enough? Um, I think it's a bit of both. I think uh, the government of the day isn't being questioned enough, and because they are the because they are the government of the day, yeah. the BBC will lean with them a little bit. Do but, as their paymasters almost. Yeah, absolutely, and that applied to New Labour. Uh, but that would be and Labour governments in the past. Yeah, I mean that would be quite hard to put into action, though, wouldn't it? Because you'd I'm not sure how you would do that in a news gathering meeting, how you would get a report and say, we've got to try and make this a little bit, um, you know, a bit right-wing? Um, well, I think that's probably by the questions that you ask. Um, and, and also by... So you'd have, to, well, you'd have to say to all of those journalists, thousands of them, and producers, and assistant producers, and reporters, and editors, all of them, you'd have to, they'd all have to be in on this, wouldn't they? You'd all have to tell them all. You've all got to be a little bit right. Well, presumably they have to face that every day anyway. I mean, they have to... Surely they must have some kind of 
checking or verification. Well, yep, yeah, but the checking and verification yeah. is about just trying to find the, the accuracy of a story, the truth and all that. Um, yeah, well, I, I don't have a, a particular problem with the BBC being biased either way, as I say, because I think it just generally has to follow the government of the day and not lean too far either way. So really not do very much at all. OK. Steve, thank you very much indeed for that. Uh, one of the most beautiful things I did see at a, uh, when I worked at the BBC was a left-wing editor giving a a left-wing journalist a bit of a rollicking for a report that was too left-wing. And it wasn't anything that mattered that much. And I can't tell you what it was, because I will slightly identify a few players in the story. But that wasn't unusual to see somebody in a programming meeting. So, well, what did you do with that story? How did you come about that story? Did you... Were there any other guests you could have used for that story? Why did you... It was mostly based on using a counsellor. I can tell you, using a counsellor for a report that had been used for a previous report the previous day, which would have put the counsellor's position slightly... Uh, it would have compromised, if you like, the integrity of the BBC output because they'd used somebody who had known views in one area on a story for another area. So, therefore, you ended up with this slightly strange situation where the BBC sounded as if it was trying to sing from this left-wing agenda from one particular councillor of one particular party. Now, what was interesting, the editor was, uh, couldn't have unionised lefty. I mean, I couldn't even begin to tell you how left-wing this guy was, who was giving a right royal rollicking to the journalist who was being overtly left-wing. So that kind of goes a little bit against the crammed full of sizzling lefties, it might be, but does that manifest in their output? No. Uh, David in Brentwood, hello. Yes, hello. I, mean, I, I just think we ought to nail this one once and for all. I mean, the last director general of the BBC, Mark Thompson, gave an interview in 2010, and I quote him for, for basing when he said the BBC was massively left wing. I, I mean, I don't think. I'm not saying they're a Marxist organisation, but they are naturally left-wing. I think he was talking uh, about um, perhaps personnel as distinct from editorial. Well, I think he was talking about, you know, the fact era, which, uh, you know, they obviously, you know, were very anti-factor. But I, 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 you know, I don't think it's in dispute. I mean, the current Labour Party, as Paul just seems to think, you know, they're, they're, they're sort of some sort of Tory or media organisation because they don't, they seem to think they've got it in for Jeremy Corbyn. But I, I, I mean, I, I went to the the, um, the the big debate about Brexit. I thought the, the BBC were very fair down the middle before the debates, um, before the referendum. Mm -hmm. After the referendum, they've done nothing but push and you know anti-Brexit stories. I mean, you know, you watch the BBC London News. It's the output is just it's so biased. It's untrue. My problem with is that because there's just more of those stories. No, no, no. They, they run stories. I mean, I've read stories about the, you know jobs leaving the city of London, which you know none of this is uh, proven. So obviously, some jobs are going to go, but it's not massive. But my my problem with the BBC is that they dominate the news media. Most people get their news from the BBC, but they watch uh, you know BBC news bulletins, 24-hour news, or their yeah. local radio stations, or their website. They've got a far greater reach than any newspaper you can think of, and they're financed by a regressive taxation system. There is certainly an issue over there. Um, I mean, you'll be aware on their website now that they often have to give um, some prominence to local newspapers. Have you seen that, Tom? On the, the, you get that on the BBC thing, it will say on their website. You can also find this story in the Lincolnshire Echoes. And they've got to do that. They've been told to do that because otherwise they were just essentially monopolising the marketplace with, with free money. So that wouldn't be fair. David, I've got to, let me just ask you this really quickly, David, because I'm aware of time. Do you agree with UKIP's position on this, then, that their licence fee well, should I, be removed? I think, I, think, I, think you, I think UKIP are right, but I, I, I think that you know, but I don't think it's going to happen because, you know, obviously the Tories are negotiating a new charge. I think, I think the BBC would be fearful of a massive Tory majority, but I don't think the, I don't think the Tories are up for dismantling the BBC. I don't think it's on the agenda at all. So. OK. David, thank you very much indeed. This story comes around because UKIP, UKIP have talked about how they would scrap the licence fee. They've got a whole bunch of reasons why it's wrong from... 
innovations in technology that makes it slightly redundant, the costly affair of prosecuting people who haven't paid their license. But the clincher for them, according to their economic spokesman, uh, Patrick O'Flynn, said Paul Flynn, then is a Labour MP, Patrick O'Flynn, is this business of their political bias, uh, particularly over Brexit. Say you can. Oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. More of your thoughts on that in just a second. Would you concur with UKIP that the BBC are biased and biased particularly over Brexit? And secondly, because of that, would you scrap the license fee right now? Our lines are open. It's LBC. Great calls on this one on the way. First, let's get the latest news headlines from Charles Rowe. Counter-terror police are questioning a 21-year-old woman who was shot during an operation in northwest London on Thursday. She was arrested after being discharged from hospital. Separately, detectives have been given more time to hold a man arrested near the Houses of Parliament the same day. A rider has died and another has been seriously injured at a quad bike and motocross event. It happened near Sedgefield in County Durham. Police had to close it down for safety reasons. The Conservatives have dismissed calls for a referendum on a final Brexit deal as pure chaos. Labour MPs Clive Lewis and Rachel Maskell are encouraging their party to offer a vote ahead of the general election. LBC weather. Cloudy tonight, rain for southern England and the Midlands pushing north, a low of eight. Showers for England and Wales during Monday. Bright in western Scotland, a high of 15 degrees. This is LBC. If you own a Swiss watch and it's time to sell it, speak to watches.co.uk. The whole process runs like clockwork. Rolex, Patek Philippe, Amiga and more. It only takes a couple of ticks and we pay immediately. Or if you just fancy a change, we could take yours in part exchange. From time on your hands to money in your pocket, it couldn't be easier with watches.co.uk. The pre-owned Swiss watch specialist. Welcome to London's exquisite Indian dining experience, Marla Restaurant. The finest North Indian cuisine in the most charming setting. Find us in the heart of one of London's divine hidden gems, St. Catherine's Dock. Marla Restaurant. Visit us in St. Catherine's Dock or go to marlarestaurant.co.uk. Marla, discover a jewel in London's secret paradise. Relax. It's Trust a Trader. Blooming lovely tradespeople who do the job right. Visit trustatrader.com. When you need more space. Think creatively. What could you use a log cabin for? A studio? A home office? A den for the kids? Creative Living will design and build a log cabin to suit your needs. Even taking care of electricity and climate control. See for yourself at our three large cabin display villages in Surrey. Find out where at creativelivingcabins.co.uk. You own a cabin. Handcrafted. The Creative Living Way. I wish I could create content like videos and music. I need the skills to bring my ideas to life. I wish I could write apps, but I need to learn how to code. I wish I could get trained up for a media career. While well, studying for my GCSEs and A-levels. The Global Academy in Hayes is a state school for 14 to 19 year olds interested in a media career. Find out more at globalacademy.com. Late Nights with Ian Collins on LBC. Uh, leading Britain's conversation, a lot of comments and calls on this. By the way, in the next section, we're going to be talking about... And it's fascinating, this, because you don't... I, I, I don't think... Or maybe once I've been on a flight when somebody started to kick off a little bit because they've had too much booze. Uh, but there is a now a mobilised argument to make drinking in the air a criminal offence. All that duty-free malarkey, a criminal offence. I, I want to speak to you if you're a passenger, a pilot, cabin crew involved in any shape or form with airlines and you can give me a qualified or a lay view on the perils and the problems of alcohol at 33,000 feet and as to why it should be seriously knocked on the head. I would guess that's a bit terrifying, isn't it, when somebody really... So you know it's like when you see somebody utterly lashed up in the street and they are just look like an utter mentalist, don't they? And you think, man alive... Huge. If you don't kill yourself by falling over, someone's going to probably do it for you by lumping you one because of your lazy gob. And you see this all the time, and somebody is... Imagine that in a closed 
area of an aeroplane, that's not a good place to be. Oh, uh, three, four, five, six, oh, six, oh, nine, seven, three. We'll look at that in just a little bit. Back on the issue of the UK Independence Party uh, announcing today that they would look at scrapping the licence fee. The BBC has essentially served its purpose, run its course, and apart from anything else, it's pretty flipping biased, particularly over Brexit. True or false? Roy is in Eastbourne. Hello, Roy. Hi. Hi. You know, I wouldn't say the BBC were biased, but I would think they're probably the best example at the moment of editorial laziness. Go on. Uh, um, it's interesting. And, and they're not unique in that at all. I think you'll find that Sky and BBC came to favour whoever is currently in power. Uh, I mean, if you look at the chief political correspondents, they're normally built like battleships uh, <laughs> who, 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 you know, love to... Impress. Sure, Laura Coonsberg will be delighted to hear that. <laughs> yeah, but they love to impress us about how close they are to whoever's in power. And I mean, the days of the incisive interview have long since gone. Uh, they ask the question, completely ignored. They ignore the answer and answer the next question on their sheet. Uh, you know, I mean, it is rather interesting. I, you know, you could have. Uh, so Theresa May appeared today. I think she was on uh, the BBC, and I think she was on Preston, uh, Pe 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 Peston, as yeah. well. Um, it's funny how they do that, isn't it? In the same clobber, sort of half an hour apart, we're in the same. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, no, I would have just hammered Theresa May about cuts to disability payments, and I wouldn't have stopped for the entire interview. No, absolutely. To the point where I think that that would have, I'd have just taken that one theme and said, why, why, why don't you just reinstate that you don't need to cut that? Why, why not? That would become the biggest story of the day. It would play to the vanity of Marr and Peston. They would get all the headlines out of it. Theresa May would be embarrassed into having to do something about it, and it would start a national debate. And what was the trailer for that programme? We ask the questions that you want asked. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah, I didn't ask my one, but but then again, that doesn't that come down to it, Roy? I, that doesn't mean that Peston or Ma are biased because they didn't no. ask my question. Absolutely not. They're not biased. They're just editorially lazy. Uh, you know, they, it, it, it's too much bother these days to like, actually have an incisive interview. You never gain anything from an interview from a stage interview these days. And so, who, if you are against whoever's being interviewed, you think they're, you're being biased. But they're not biased. They, they, if the Labour win power of today, part, they would be... Supported. Yeah, I mean, part of the problem is that that... Um, the, and I know a few people who work on one of those programmes. Uh, I won't say which one. Um, and in fairly senior positions as well. But So I know that they would have been a lot of meetings beforehand they would have sat down and come up with an agenda and a set of questions do you think that's the kind of it's too formulaic almost Roy that somebody said look yeah. you need to go I mean Andrew Marr is not exactly a man without experience you know his journalistic yeah. credentials are there for all to see I know I've put him in my book but not because of him but more because of something that happens in his show but that's, yeah, a, that's a separate yeah. issue but I like him and I think he's background is is you know is solid people have always accused him of being a bit on the left because I think Politically, he certainly used to be uh, in terms of his own allegiance, but I don't really think that's affected his interviewing. But he would have sat down with a bunch of questions as well. Do you think they just want to get too many questions in? Yeah, you, you're absolutely right. They've had their editorial meeting, they've got their 12 questions, they're going to ask the 12 questions, they don't even listen to the answer, they're looking at what the next question is. <clears throat> I mean, you, you know, I, I'd love anybody to tell me when they last saw an in-depth interview on television that made them change their vote. Yeah. It's interesting. And, you know, I, I, I was looking at some stuff on social media at the weekend, Roy, of Donald Trump. Forget what he was saying. Forget his policies on energy yeah. or immigration, whatever it was. But his style of delivering it sounded like the fella that works down the road. He sounded like the guy next door. And that's why he's now sitting in the White House. And I, I'm staggered why... You know, when Theresa May was asked about tax cuts, she should have just said, do you know what, Andrew, I really don't know. I'd love to say I'm not going to raise taxes, but to be honest, that would make that would be really irresponsible if I did that. I honestly don't know. I'd love to not raise them. I'm not going to promise you that. If she spoke in that kind of way, yeah. she'd be picking the curtains for number 10 tomorrow. But she, for some reason, it's not... I talk to people. Yeah, exactly. It's not yeah. in her... Um, uh, kind of MO, it's not 
in her training and it's not in her personality either. Whereas Trump would have probably said exactly, you know, what I just said when he talked about the Muslim ban, which was a, a, a slightly offensive, well, more than slightly offensive, a ridiculous thing to say, more than anything. But the tone in which he said it, do you remember that? We've got to figure out what's going on. What's going on? Are people getting murdered out there? What's happening? You know, he spoke in a way that people thought, wow, this guy feels like I feel. Yeah, absolutely. You can remember what he said. Correct. I bet you can't, bet you can't remember what uh, somebody said on Newsnight last Friday. Well, I know Theresa May said good morning, Andrew, this morning, so I remember that bit. <laughs> That's all I remember. But that was on Robert Peston's show, so it's a bit unfortunate. Yeah. There you go. Right, thank you very much indeed for that. 0345 973 Well, and in fact, Corbyn sort of comes a little, a little, a little, he's sort of not believable, I think. If I was the media trainer surrounding, I, I said this about Cameron as well, I'd love to get hold of some of these people and just shake them down and say, look, you've got to quit the smiling thing. You cut trees and make smiles like Gordon Brown smiles. She just it doesn't believe, it just doesn't look believable. She's a serious person, a studious person, and is all the better for playing to those talents, as it were. Remember they got Gordon Brown to smile on that YouTube video? It was a horror story. And Theresa May comes across as kind of some sort of silent assassin whenever she smiles. Don't do it, Theresa. Do not smile because it's not your greatest attribute. But I'd love to sit down and say, look, answer it this way. Don't worry about the bluster and the guff and the prolonging of your answer. To just come out with it in a way that the average person on the street could understand. I mean, when it was David Cameron, I used to think, well, he's from such a sort of upper-class background. He's so embroiled in the whole kind of Etonian journey that as nice as he might be as a bloke, and I don't know, I did meet him a couple of times, but they're always nice when you meet them, as nice as he might be to his friends and family and all the rest of it, He's never going to come across as a bloke that speaks as he does. And he did once say that, didn't he? I think in his initial acceptance speech. Look, you know, I can't change my background. Fair enough. That was probably the best thing I ever heard him say, because he was very honest. Uh, but I never expected anything more from Cameron. But Theresa May is just sort of an ordinary working-class girl. She didn't go to a private school. She went to comprehensive school. She did well out the whole thing. She's worked hard. She should be able to sell that kind of if you like, that kind of normalness. Uh, but she, she's still a little clumsy. And I don't think comes across as particularly warm. I don't think the media training, whatever's going on around her, is a horrific at the moment. And it needs to have that. I'd love to hear a Prime Minister say, I can't tell you I'm not going to raise them back to going to Brexit. What a stupid question. Of course I don't know. My aspiration is that we don't. My gut feeling is that we won't, but can I tell you, I would be lying to the British, but that's what you want to hear, isn't it? Darren in Knightsbridge. I'm getting carried away here, Darren. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I've been enjoying the show, Ian. Thank you. Um, it's funny about perceptions. that I haven't lived under a Labour government, uh, a true Labour government, um, so I can't, I can't remember what the BBC would have been like under a Labour government, but I have to say that in my, my perception is they, uh, they do lean to the right. Uh, they're, they're a right-wing uh, news outfit, and I would say that they've got two two agendas. Uh, one is to uh, support the, the, the corporate uh, the corporate uh, agenda, and the other the other agenda is to pacify the people, keep the people dumbed down. Why would um, the, how do you think? How do you th just out of interest? I mean, most of the people that I know that work at the BBC, I can think of two exceptions are. Uh, not just left-wing, but embroiled in left-wing politics as well. They're unionised, they're very much, you know, into the whole party system. They would certainly, without doubt, be Corbyn voters. These are very senior people, by the way. What do you think those people are thinking, Darren, when they're given this instruction that you clearly believe they're given to be corporate and right-wing? I don't know. Maybe they get told. To, maybe they get gagged a little bit or something like that. Remember the size of the BBC. Is it is it like one of the biggest com companies in in the world? The amount of people it employs. So your example of just pulling out a couple of uh, sort of like left wing socialists, it doesn't no, really but, come into the argument. Well, well, it does because they would have to. They would have to be part of it. Well, everybody would have to be. Every journalist would have to be part yeah, of this. I, I can see what you're saying. So let me ask you this question: yeah. Which, in your opinion, is is Fox News or CNN right-leaning and, and, and biased? 
and uh, to, to the corporates and to, and to war and to stuff like that. Would, would you, would, would That's you interesting you say that because CNN is accused of being Dem the Democrats' favourite and obviously Fox is accused of being the Republicans' favourite, but of course, as you know... Well, only, to the recent, only in the recent... Uh, 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 you know, uh, yeah, maybe, there, maybe, but maybe, but as you know, Darren, a, de a Democrat in the United States I mean, is far to, the, yeah. far to the right of a Conservative over here. So, it, but However, they've got different regulations, so they're allowed to have... I mean, Fox News, for example, if you just watch the news on the hour on Fox News, which I can't think of the last time I did, but I've seen it, the news on the hour is just the news. It's all the comment stuff that goes on those shows with... I think they've got a show presented by a man called Shep. I think I really think they have. I'm not. I'm, I might be wrong. I think there's a man called Shep who presents a show, and he looks very tanned and very quiffed and very manicured and very right wing. But that's his. Uh, Shep Shepherd Smith. His name is. So do you think then uh, that they they sit around a table then and and they do have an agenda like we've got to we've got to have this angle on this news item. Not on the news so item, no. They, 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 will take, they will do the debates. But when I, the last time I looked at Fox News, I was flicking on... There's a version of Fox... Well, maybe it is Fox News. What I have noticed is that if they have a debate, they have left and right. So they have both sides of the argument. But the presenter, the anchor, is... Not, the, not seriously the news reader, but the people who do the comments. Yeah, stuff. yeah. Because it's a different format, and they're not regulated in the same way as us. So they could actually so, sit on TV and say, vote Republican, and nobody would send them to jail. If you did that... at the BBC or Sky, you would go to jail. Yeah, see, I, 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 I don't think that they do or sit around a table and, uh, uh, like that, either here or there. I think it naturally occurs. It's done by the uh, the, the the top. If you look at the people at the top, like uh, we had Chris Pan here, we had Rona Fairhead, who's in charge of the BBC Trust, who are also working. Yeah, but that's not. We've, we've been like in this that. territory before, Darren. Yeah, there is I not. I couldn't even down. tell you. No, I couldn't even begin to tell. It's you're describing a different job. You've not. You've got the wrong idea of the role of the chairman of the BBC governors. Yeah, but I think yeah, you know, obviously. But I think what the way it works is that they will employ people of like-minded. Uh, they don't employ anybody. They don't employ anybody. Uh, well, they chat to people. They they talk, I mean, Chris Patton. Like. Chris Patton it's, might as well be in Jeremy culture. Corbyn's Labour Party. He's so left-wing. It's ludicrous. It's the right-wing culture. Well, uh, let me ask you this question. Then, yeah. last question. Go I, when I watch RT, right, and I sit there and I go, Do you know what? That was a brilliant question. Do you know what? I agree with that. I, that happens to me a lot. Because politically, you agree with as simple as that. It's called confirmation bias. RT could okay. not be more overtly right. biased in that respect if President Putin read the news, for goodness sake. Darren, we've got to stop there. Uh, but I guess, you know, if you're backed by the Russians, you might want to nod to your paymasters. But, hey, it's... Clearly quite a popular outlet. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Love chatting to Darren. Should the BBC licence fee be scrapped? UKIP say yes, partly based on their bias over Brexit. Thoughts on that coming up on LBC. This is LBC. Move up to a new lifestyle in N10. Introducing Pinnacle. An award-winning residential development from Jan Living in an enviable location at the heart of Muswell Hill Village. From Thursday the 4th until Saturday the 6th of May, we're releasing the last remaining 11 units. With incredible incentives including stamp duty payments for deposits placed that weekend. Find out more at pinnacle-n10.com or text STAMP to 60777. It started with a letter in the mail. And then another. That's when they started. Soon you hear her. And now you're just struggling and panicking and just... How did it get so bad? The more you hide from debt, the worse it becomes. Capitalise has been helping thousands of people across London manage their debt with free, impartial, face-to-face -face advice. Get help today at capitalise.org.uk. When you need more space Think creatively What could you use a log cabin for? A studio? A home office? A den for the kids? Creative Living will design and build a log cabin to suit your needs Even taking care of electricity and climate control See for yourself at our three large cabin display villages in Surrey Find out where at creativelivingcabins.co.uk You own a cabin Handcrafted The creative living way what do you think of when someone says the word used, old-fashioned, out of tune, a bit scratched, something past its best? Chances are you're not thinking 
of a Mercedes Benz. And certainly not one of the latest models. Think Mercedes Benz approved used. Suddenly, there's a lot more meaning to that little word. Visit your local retailer to find your used car today, and you'll see what I mean. I like the way you work it. Mercedes Benz approved used. Used, but not what you're used to. Late Nights with Ian Collins on LBC. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, which is at Ian Collins UK, uh, I'm about to post a, an image of Shep Smith. He's the Fox News reader, Shep Smith. This man is carved out of wood. He's a Thunderbird pup. You never saw anybody look like it. They sat down in a studio and went, right, we need to make a cliché of a kind of American white teeth, tanned, cosmetic surgery enhanced, full head of Grecian 2000 type hair news rig. We need to make one of those. Um, we're going to call him Shep. She's called Shep, for goodness sake. Folks should be in jail for that kind of moniker. Shep. <whistles> Shep. Uh, this guy is on at 3 p.m. Eastern time. He reads the news on Fox and does all the opinion stuff. Shep is made out of, I'm telling you, he's carved out of wood. Shep is not a human being, I don't think. Uh, by all accounts, by the way, his salary is seven to eight million dollars a year. Are you kidding me? For look for having your face chopped up. <laughs> seven to eight million dollars a year. Wow. That's amazing. Uh, he's from a moneyed family, but he's, yeah. Anyway, I was going to say, by all accounts, a really nice guy and an absolute professional. Hey, lawyers, I hope you're listening. Uh, Shep's an influential man. <laughs> uh, I'm going to tweet a picture of Shep, just so you, can, you know what I'm dealing with here. Uh, follow me on Twitter, at IanCollinsUK. I'll tweet that in just a second. The reason I mention that, of course, is because he's part and parcel of the face of Fox News, and Fox News is uh, overtly Republican-supporting in its commentary, its news. They just say it's... I think it's called... Is it called News and Comment or Fair and Biased or something? Fair and Biased, Fair and Balanced. Um, but you know that. What you don't have to watch Fox News... Uh, we don't have that problem in this country. We don't have that issue in this country. Don't go away, Howard, with you in a second. This is Chris in South End. Far away, Chris. What are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, Ian, yeah. Um, I, well, I agree. I don't really think you can accuse the BBC of bias. I mean, they certainly are, um, I think, probably more unbiased compared to a lot of the press for start, which is heavily right wing. Uh, uh, and there's certainly a lot more impartial than South Ball news or, and Sky news, so I'll give them that because. Um, I mean, you know, for a start, I, I think we should keep the BBC, I think we should keep the licence fee. I think that it makes our culture more uh, um, enriched. And also, with newspapers declining in sales, which I think is personally a good thing, the um, you know, one thing I trust is the BBC News. I you know, and in fact, there was, a, there was a stat that I read that as many as one in five news hits on the internet of the BBC. So it could probably keep, especially in this era of fake news as well. It keeps us in balance on that, do you think? Yes, no, it does. I mean, what I don't like about the BBC, I'll tell you, I don't like the rampant nepotism that there is in the BBC. I don't I, I, I think it could be a lot more open in its recruitment policy. I think it definitely does help to reinforce the class system in certain areas. Yeah. Um I mean I, and the thing that really puzzles me is that they give me the BBC free saying that we well we've got to save thirty million gov and all that rubbish. <laughs> um I to then spend thirty million on a town just to Scotland. I mean, it, it's insane. It, yeah. it, is, it could have been about saving money. It, 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 it's it's one of the thing with BBC Three. Okay, there was a lot of rubbish sitcoms, and I don't really think that they invested enough in it. But it did give. It, it was almost like a trial ground for new writers. All right. And, and, and Yeah, I mean, it is still there, of course, but it's online, and some would say that you know, online is maybe the place it should be, Chris. I don't know. I mean, I. I'll be honest with you, I've not watched anything on BBC Three, uh, except that comedy people just do nothing. I've not watched anything on BBC Three since they went off there. So, okay. um, I, yeah, and I think also a lot of people, you know, they want to be, you want to be on TV. 
if you want to be online, you go on YouTube, you go on Vimo, or whatever it is. I, I, I just feel that really, as the, as the one they want to get in the very promise, Jane Lush even said it herself, who's the BAFTA chairman. She said, the BBC is simply not taking enough risks in comedy. Okay. That's that, 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 If I was the BBC, I would scrap the 24-hour news channel. There's too much news on the, uh, on the telly and too much news on the radio, they quite. All right, OK, Chris, we move on for no other reason than just to get more comment on. Thank you for that. I would kind of argue that that's probably where... Uh, and my analysis of this is rather simple, and I stand to be corrected, it's just a view, is that perhaps it is in news alone that the BBC may have the greatest case to remain the recipients of a licence fee of some sort. And it's interesting to me that editorially Sky News came along a bunch of years ago and people thought this can't work, you can't take on the might of something like the BBC, it's never going to happen. You're not allowed to do a sort of Foxy News thing, not a Foxy News, Fox type news thing, so it's not going to work. Uh, but if you put enough money behind it, then it could do. And it, it took a lot of time with a lot of really good... Uh, journalists and producers and editors behind it all to make it happen and it really would have been a joint effort in that respect but slowly but surely they were able to carve their way not just domestically but internationally into areas and bureaus where once upon a time you know the BBC probably had hacks sitting on a hammock in Barbados that folk had thought had forgotten was there and then suddenly one day a guy from Sky News shows up and goes hi it's like, oh my goodness I better start doing some work because Sky News are suddenly here all of a sudden. The new kids are on the block, and the BBC have their style, and when I say style, I'm talking about visually, mostly speaking, and Sky will have theirs. There'll be some differences in the, the way that they, you know, the music stings, bumpers, as they call them, and just stylistically the way things are together. But in terms of impartiality and integrity of news gathering, there isn't an awful lot in it, and my argument is that... The BBC is kept in check because of the existence of Sky News, and Sky News is kept in check because of the existence of the BBC. It's sort of a strange, curious synergy that exists between the two, like a kind of cat and mouse game in some respects. They're not really in competition, but in some respects, both are made rather good because of the existence of the other. I genuinely believe that to be a, a, perhaps an unexpected... Uh, gift or an unexpected uh, benefit and boom for the British journalistic, television journalistic industry. I genuinely think that is the case and nobody thought Sky could quite do that and on many, many occasions Sky beats the BBC to lots of stories and wins awards and uh, all sorts of adulation for doing so. Howard is in Hastings. What are your thoughts, Howard? Good evening. Um, uh, good evening, Ian. Uh, I'll be very brief on this, uh, very, very brief, but I, I, I think some people have mailed it. It's, it's, not, it's not left, or there's, no, there's nothing left or right-wing about the BBC. In fact, left and writers who have been politics don't even come into it, and I think, as, in a consideration of the BBC. I think it really is an audiovisual avatar or representation of the British establishment in all the decades. It was in the 60s, it was in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, and so on and so forth. I think it just represents the, 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 uh, the, the sort of the state behind the state, whoever sort of is, is you know, pol driving policy um, you know, behind the Conservative Party or behind the Labour Party um, at any given time. Those people behind the Labour Party and the Conservative Party who the BBC represent, I think they represent a sort of state... They represent the state, so there's a slight authoritarian bias to them, which I was saying to your producer, I reckon that's where people perceive the bias to the right or left, because I think people on the libertarian right probably perceive the BBC as a bit left biased than people on the libertarian left, I think, generally perceive the BBC as a bit Correct. right biased, because of that slight kind of sort of patronising, yeah. talking down to people kind of thing you get from them. So overall, you think that probably works out, as most people often say, if you get accused of being left or get accused of being right, then the chances are you're somewhere in the middle doing it properly. You're kind of in that territory. Mm, you can be, it depends on... No, no, not necessarily, and, uh, and if I'll give them more time, I, I, would, I would elaborate on, on, on that. Well, I'll answer me this, Howard. Sorry, sorry, to cut it, sorry to interject. Would you take, would you take Paul Nuttall's uh, view and scrap the licence fee? Um, I would scrap a lot, absolutely, for lots of reasons. I mean, there's about a hundred reasons. Um, um, 
give you some reasons to, to explain why that'd be a good idea. But yes, definitely, the life of the should be scrapped. BBC should be scrapped and spot in my opinion. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, that's Howard in Hastings. Uh, we change tone, we change gear in the next section. Being drunk at 33,000 feet. Next on FM, online, on your mobile and on digital radio. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. From Global's newsroom at 12 o'clock, a 21-year-old woman is being questioned after being shot.